Hey, on a bench this morning, I have a Pioneer SX880. It's a beautiful system. It's about the very same as the SX780 that I had on the bench uh, prior to this. Everything except that this is a lot more powerful. I, I believe that he bought this from another guy and he, he just wants me to check it over and see what we can find. He got it pretty cheap, so I'm thinking maybe there might be something wrong with this. But anyways, we're gonna plug this in. Okay, so dim bulb, and we'll power this on. And there you have it. I do have a short. It's, it's drawing quite a bit of uh, voltage, and my dim bulbs are lit up, so I do have a short inside here that I need to figure out what is wrong with it. Could it be the output transistors? Uh, I'm not sure. Knowing that I have a short with this, I'm not going to be able to do a sound test. Uh, when there's a major short in one of these receivers, you do have to shut it off and open this up and try to see where the short is. It's just too dangerous to try this out, power this on, and, and uh, I wouldn't take any chance on it. So I'm, I'm going to shut this off and uh, we're going to open this up, see if I can't find that short. And we're going to do that right now. Speed to the city streets, we began to feel the fire. We rise like tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher. The night's young, and it's just begun as she puts her hand in mine. Okay, we're ready to open this up. Well, there you have it. It's beautiful. There's the inside. It looks quite clean. I'll give you some lighting here. Uh, if you guys can see, my, my output transistors are underneath this board. My emitter resistors are right here. Check, Check out the transformer. It's huge. You know you're pushing wattage when you have a great big transformer like this. There's my filter caps. The great big heat sink on this. Yeah, this all in all, it's going to be a really nice project. And uh, we better get to work. Right off the bat, I'm not seeing anything. It looks pretty good in here. And there's the bottom part of this Pioneer. It's, it's a big unit. I do have a hot mark right here. Do you guys see this? Right there, this could cause an issue or this could be an issue. And these are my output transistors. This is the right channel, this is the left channel. Okay, some fuses are here. We'll check those as well. But anyways, we have to get to work because I do have a short in here and we need to find out what it is. I'm going to start with the output transistors. I want to see if those are short and we'll test those. If they are, then we found the issue. Okay. I'll put this on diode mode. This is a good transistor, so we'll check the NPNs. So, whoop, it's not my NPNs. So we'll try the PMPs. These are the two right here. PMP, I'm just going to switch this around. Okay. There's a good junction. That one there is good. So good. It's not my outputs. I'm pretty excited about this. 
Okay guys, I've checked the output transistors and they were they were not short. We're going back on, on the, the short that I have on this receiver. I do know that it's not my, my output transistors. My output transistors are absolutely working fine. I, and I still don't know if it's, if it's happening within the power amp. I believe that it is. I believe it's a transistor that I have short on this board. And it's, it's kind of like a process of elimination. I, I'm not sure if it's the left or the right. I, I still don't have anything like that yet. But what I want to do is, since my outputs are fine, I'm just going to check my uh, emitter resistors, see if I have any activity on the left or the right. And uh, we're, we're going to go from that, okay? Usually, if your amp is not working right, you may have some voltage around your emitter resistor. Maybe it's it's not going to give me any clue at all, but it's a good way to start. And uh, with just a multimeter, you can actually find uh, maybe some issues uh, by just taking some measurements. Okay, so I'm going to go. I'll bring you guys closer. And I've got it on. I'm going to put this on DC voltage. I'll flick this around and I'll show you where I want to measure next. My outputs are okay. I'm going to try to get those emitter resistors, see if I can't get any voltage on those. May give me a clue of which channel. Okay, the pinouts that I want to check if I have any voltage on my emitter resistors are right here. This pin 8 and pin 10 right here. And this would be for the left. And for the right, it would be pin 14 and 16 right here. So if I check these, and I should I should only have this is this is where these are the pins where I would check if I have any bias, and the bias should only be about 30 millivolts on these. Eh? Any greater voltage than that, that could give me an issue. So. It's a good way of finding out if you if you have an issue on your amp is if you check your emitter resistor and you have you know two three four five volts ten volts then you know you have an issue on that side of the board okay so this is what I'm planning on doing so I'm not going to go directly on the emitter resistor this time because the pinouts are right here right these are the two pinouts. And like I said, I should only have about 30 millivolts on those. Okay, so I'm gonna be checking that. There, I have uh, on the left, on pin number 10, which is concentrated on the emitter resistor on the left side, I have 0 0.0112. And on the other pin is actually zero. So I don't see any voltage on the left. Let's go check the right and the right channel is telling me that I have 13 volts so we definitely have an issue on the right channel I should not be having any voltage at all on my emitter resistors okay guys so I have voltage on the right channel and uh, that eliminates a lot for me because now I, I know that I don't have to check this side I know I have to do some search around here and there's one two three four five transistors on this board right here that I'm going to be checking instead of checking ten transistors I only have to check five which is perfect and I'll, I'm also going to be checking some of these uh, resistors that are right close to the emitter resistor could be it could very well be uh, a resistor as well but I, I'm thinking it is a transistor so let's get to work we're gonna flip this around here has an issue I'm gonna be checking those two transistors right there that's that's where I'm going right next okay and those are the two this is my right side I know those are the two transistors that I need to check okay now 
I'm going to put my multimeter on diode mode and let's see if I have a short on these transistors. I think this is my base. So this transistor is telling me that it's good. Let's check this one. This is short. This transistor is short. I should be reading. Yeah. This is a good junction. There's another junction. So this transistor is, is, is proving to be okay. Now let's check this one. This transistor is short. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this out of circuit and we'll check it further. Always take it out of circuit and then recheck it. Okay. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to take this transistor out of there. go. This transistor is testing short. So let's see if it is on diode. This transistor is short. And this is the A913 on the circuit board on the power amp of the SX880. Test this again. Short. Short. I should have a junction here. Okay, so this transistor is proving short. We need to replace this and I'll have to find a replacement. We'll go online and uh, I'm sure there's a replacement though. No worries. I've always liked to double check my work. So this is a A913 so I know this is a PNP. So, and this is the base, so I'll put the negative on the base, and the other two should be positive with the junction. So, this transistor is short. And I've looked online, and they want me to replace it with a 15031G. And I had a whole stack of them here. So, and this is what a good transistor should sound like. I should have a junction here, which I do, and a junction there. And which I do. So if we cross these over, this should be open as well. So this is not the case with this one. Short and short. We're going to replace it with this brand new transistor. And this, I believe, will bring the Pioneer back to life. There's a transistor right there. I'm going to attach this back to the heat sink. There we go. All right. 15031G is the replacement for the A913. Okay.
So what do you got? Okay, I've got you on the dim bulb site. I'm going to power this on under the dim bulb, under protection. And check out my lamps. They light up and then go dim again after they've charged a capacitor. That means that my transistor that I replaced, repair, that's short. So I'm going to bring the power to this. I've only had 50 volts. So I'll bring this to 120. 123. Let's see. This is going to work. And I want to see if the relay is going to kick in. The lamps are on. It's charged up. And the relay just kicked in. Perfect. This is good news. There it is. So, I've replaced that transistor and it seems to be working great. Okay. Now, I'm going to continue on with this. I want to try to investigate a little more around this area here. Why is this heating up so much? I have no idea. Pinpointed the uh, the transistor, which is the Q26 on this board. Q26 is running hot. Forty-five right here. Forty-five is about a hundred and twelve. <laughs> 112 Fahrenheit. I'm going to try to work around this transistor. The transistor is testing uh, good. It's working. But it gets really hot. And uh, I'm just wondering why it's really hot. So we're going to do a little better search around this circuitry here. I'll check some resistors. I'm going to check all these capacitors as well and uh, see if I can't find anything out of the ordinary. I doubt that I will because there's nothing wrong with this. It's working perfectly now. I'm just wondering if it, just, if it is just running hot. I've got one of these that I can actually check the temperature with. I've got to let this run for a while. Uh, Not too bad now, it's at 33. I do have it on Celsius though. Hundred and eight. Now this is the heat sink that I I'm getting measurements from the heat sink. Now, these resistors here are really hot as well. Especially this one. check the soldering on this one okay so I've soldered uh, um, longer legs on this resistor it's a 1.4 K resistor kind of hoping maybe that'll help out if the heat dissipates well enough that <clears throat> we don't have to worry about I, I think this unit uh, does run hot anyway but uh, we'll wait and see, uh, give it a test anyway. This one here is only 80 Fahrenheit. This one here is 108. The heat sink is 108. I'm not sure what the transistor would be. Transistor is 88. So the heat sink is doing its work. It's, it's absorbing the heat from the transistor. So, okay, I'm gonna measure. The transistor itself is a hundred, about a hundred degrees. I don't know, what do you guys think?
Yeah, I know what you're going to say. You're going to check. Yeah, I need to check all around there, and I did. And nothing is jumping at me. Everything is bang on. Uh, some soldering. I did touch up a little bit of soldering here and there, but uh, it's still it's still hot. I, I think it was just the nature of the beast. You know? Taking the temperature on the transistor, the transistor is about 30 degrees lower than the heat sink. So the heat sink is actually doing its work. So I'm going to leave it at that because this was not a complaint at first. I, obviously, you know, it's this has been running like this forever. And I've checked all of the resistors, capacitors, diodes, and, and I didn't find anything wrong. <laughs> I mean, I could be I could be looking for for days on this and and not find anything. Replace everything, and it would still be hot. So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Um, we've got what we've done so far. I've repaired the short that was on uh, the right channel, that transistor that was short. So we've replaced it and we've got it back together. Now the only thing that I want to do is I'm gonna take a look at the bias, see if I can't adjust anything this should be around if I if I remember correctly it should but it should be around 30 millivolts so we'll check that and uh, we'll also check the DC voltage and we'll do a sound test on this see how powerful this is okay so we're gonna get right to work I'm using a regular outlet I want full power on this and I'm gonna set myself up I'm going to change my probes on this channel. I'm going to start with the left channel on a biased. I can do pin 10, pin 8. And I'm going to let this warm up. Actually, I'm going to see what it's at now. So, pin 8 and pin 10 for the left channel. And this is what I'm getting so far. This should be around 30 millivolts. But I just started it up. So we're going to let this warm up. We're climbing up to about 21. I think uh, I think that would be kind of low, wouldn't it? I am going to try the right channel. Yeah, the right channel is at 25. Okay, and this is this is supposed to be around 30, uh, but it, it, but I did see that anything between 20 and 40 millivolts uh, would be acceptable. So if you want to set it to 20, maybe 20 would be the end idea because it wouldn't get as warm. That could be be something to think about. What do you guys think? This is not warm at all. This is the right channel right there. So we're around 26. I think 26 is, is acceptable. Um, I'm just gonna readjust this part here. That will bring this down to about, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with 25. So 25. Let's see the left channel. There's the left. I'm reading 24. I'll bring this up to 25. And there you go. So 25 and 25 for uh, the bias left and right. So uh, I think that I'm pretty comfortable with that. The DC voltage. Let's see what we've got. So I've got the right channel. So the DC voltage on the right, it's it's it is high. I have this on millivolts and. Uh,
got 80 millivolts, so I am gonna bring this down to as close to zero as I can. The other way, please. There we go, it's responding well. This is millivolts, by the way, so look at this. Bang up. 1.1 millivolts. I'd say that's damn good. Let's go to the left. The left channel is 81 as well. Oof. Let's kick this down. Look at that, eh? Zero point millivolts. That's actually zero DC voltage now on my speaker terminals. This is absolutely fantastic. And uh, we're going to do the power test on this, okay? All right. I'll have this on DC voltage. It has to be on AC, okay? Okay. Let's crank this up under an 8 ohm load. Let's see. And I have this at 10 volts per division. I have distortion at 26. <laughs> 26. Check this out. Gonna kick this back though. Like right around there. 23.2. Both channels are equal. 23.2. And directly on my speaker terminal I'm getting 24.3 this is this is so powerful I eh? but uh, you've seen it on the scope you've seen how equal this was okay guys uh, this wraps it up with this Pioneer SX880 this was a fun project changed one of the transistors I've looked into the heat Nah, one of the transistors is heating up, but I think that's the nature of the beast. We've set the bias and we checked the DC voltage and it's well above 65 watts per channel. I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to put the top back on. I hope you enjoy this video. Good finding on, the, on, this, on this receiver. All in all, it was a pretty good project. If you like the video, thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. As the chemicals it takes